Hey, it's Merrill. Be sure to check out my new channel, Art Morphs. That was me before I became a serious artist. While my jumping skills have regressed, my video making skills have improved. You don't need to tilt your head to the left anymore. Now that you've seen my very mediocre Sports Center highlight, I'm going to teach you about highlighting and shading in a drawing video. This video will teach you how to draw the top player on Team USA, Mr. Kevin Durant. All you have to do is follow the step-by-step -step instructions and pause the video at the end of each step while you draw. I'm going to make it easy, so I hope that you give it a try. Let's get started. Step 1. Observe, then draw the two shapes that you see. The top shape is similar to a crescent moon. The bottom shape is trapezoidal, and the base of the bottom shape is similar to a child's drawing of a bird in flight. Step 2. Add the four oval shapes for the eyes and the ears. Be sure to notice that the left ear is much thinner because the head is turned. Step 3. The double shape that I just added is the edge of the bottom of the nose and a parallel line for a shadow. Be sure to notice the symmetrical lines on both sides of the nose as well. Here is a close-up. Step 4 is a tricky step. Start with completing the oval for the chin. Next, create the symmetrical lines for the mustache. Durant also has sparse facial hair on his bottom lip and at his chin. Step 5 is the most difficult step. I added the mouth and will give you a close-up in a second. Notice the shape of the teeth and the shadow below the teeth. Take some extra time to observe the teeth are slightly taller than the shadow below. Also, notice that the top lip gets darker as it turns towards the teeth. Step 6. Add the eyebrows to the top of the oval shapes from step 2 and the eyes towards the bottom. Also, observe and add the details to the ears. Step 7. Add the jersey. Now I'm going to teach you how to shade your drawing. Um, I used uh, a little bit of the blending stump uh, and a paintbrush and if you don't have either one you could use a q-tip. Uh, I'm starting out with the eyes like I always do and um, you can actually go pretty dark on his eyes. The, the, uh, the reference that I used was in extreme extreme shadow um, and he has very deep set eyes so if you go a little bit too dark on the eyes that's okay. Um, when I was filling in the eyebrows, I used the blending stump there, and you're really not going to see me use it again, um, you know, for the rest of the drawing. But uh, basically, what I did was I filled in the shape, and the eyebrows are not usually, you know, just one full shape. Um, there's some differentiation in there, and um, you know, I smudged it with the blending stump, and then I cross hatched over it. Uh, I'm going to use a similar strategy with the hair. Uh, but of course, like I said, I used the uh, paintbrush instead of the blending stump. There's a, uh, a highlight on his uh, upper forehead, and um, right in between uh, his two eyes, um, there's like a little bit of an indentation. Uh, some people's uh, upper noses do that, um, but it, it's very deep set, just like his eyes. So there's an extreme shadow that's there. It seems like there's a line there. You're going to see me define it some more in a little bit. Um, he doesn't have a big bridge of his nose. Um, it, it, it's it's wider than it is um, yeah, protruding, uh, so it doesn't stick out that much. But um, he has a wide nose. The bridge is really not too much shadowing that you do in there. Bottom of the nose, there's a very very strong shadow, um, and that's what the um, the double parallel line was in one of the steps from before. And you could just fill that in in the darkest color. By the way, if this is going too fast for you, just um, check out the extended shading resource. Uh, I'm going to do that again for this video. Um, most of my step-by-steps have extended shading resources, so um, uh, I, I will put a link at the bottom of the page here, and all you have to do is click that, and it'll go slower. Um, but basically, the bottom of the face, uh, which I'm defining, uh, or was defining a second ago, that's going to be dark. Um, he does have a highlight on his cheek. Uh, this is somewhat of a challenging picture to shade uh, because of that, because you don't want it to be like, 
you know two separate shapes you want the the um the blending to be smooth but that's where the paintbrush comes in um so i edited it um you know i'm using pretty much just an hb pencil uh, also known as a number 2 pencil um and i'm using the paintbrush to this point you're going to see me go darker in a little bit um i usually don't do this but i just jumped to the 6b pencil for this one and that's okay if you could control it. I always recommend um, to people you, you go up slowly. HB is very easy to erase. Um, the 6B, when you press really hard, um, it, it doesn't happen. Um, the mouth is a little bit challenging with this. Um, in one of the steps, I tried to uh, help you out with it a little bit. Um, but you really don't want to put lines in for the teeth. Um, you kind of want to hint at the uh, the lines in between, um, you know, like there's little uh, little dots that I put at the bottom and the top where the lines would be, but I really don't necessarily connect them because that's that's very tough to do, uh, and you know when you're doing an instructional video, you don't want to lead people to extreme frustration. Um, the ears. Um, people have very, very varying ears. I, I never really stress the ears, um, yeah, to tell you the truth. Uh, but, you know, there's a darker part, uh, you know, right where the opening is, uh, and there usually is a fold at the top. And I just make sure to, to darken those parts. It always helps when you have a reference image. And, of course, you can use mine uh, as your reference image. I'm doing uh, hatching and I am uh, just using the paintbrush to smudge the hatching. I have a shading tutorial uh, which I use and which I recommend um, and maybe I'll put a link to it um, in this video as well. But if not you can go, um, I will, but um, you, you can also go to my main YouTube page and there's uh, over a hundred tutorials but there's one with a helmet. Um, it teaches you how to shade a helmet and um, you know that's my primary shading tutorial. Um, I had to shade the background. I had to put a little bit of um, uh, graphite down in the background because um, you know I, I was going to put some uh, extreme highlights on his face. Uh, there were a lot of lights coming from above as you can imagine in an NBA arena. Uh, and in order to really bring those out, you have to darken the um, the back of the page. Um, I guess you don't have, well, I have to. Uh, you don't have to. It, it might be a little bit difficult if you're a beginner. If you want to challenge yourself, absolutely go right ahead. Um, you know, but uh, you, I mean, if you have a good amount of shading done on the face, you don't really have to worry about overlapping those lines. But, um, you know, if you're a beginner, you might not want to try that because you need some decent control, um, you know, to control the hatching. Uh, the paintbrush works just like a, a makeup brush, I guess. Um, you know, you kind of put something down and, you know, you, you kind of smooth it out with the paintbrush. I used to use the blending stumps, uh, and I still do a little bit uh, when I need it, uh, but... Uh, for this one, it was a nice, smooth blend, so the paintbrush was fine. Um, I use a bristle brush. Um, sometimes when I want to get like really delicate with the shading, um, I use a watercolor brush. And of course, I can't use it for watercolor after that. Um, bristle brush and oil painting, that's a little bit different. But um, yeah, for watercolor, you don't really want to go there. Um, I kind of quickly did the shirt. Um, I, I really wanted this to be more about the face. Um, yeah, I've noticed uh, from the ones that people have sent me, they've done the face and they've done their own thing with the body, and that's pretty cool. So I I'm not really sweating the shirt. I slowed this part down because I really want to talk to you about um, uh, finishing a drawing. And at this point, um, although you can't see me doing it, uh, I like to take a, a step back. I like to look at my drawing from a distance. I actually stopped the video at a few points and just, you know, looked. Um, because when you look at something up close, it looks uh, entirely different 
from when you see it at a, at a distance. And it's actually more important uh, that you get it from a distance than up close because people will decide if they want to walk over and look at your drawing up close um, from a distance. So you have to nail it from a distance. Um, and really, the trick to doing that is is getting good tones. You don't want everything to be uh, neutralized. Um, you know, it's it's that fine line that you walk between, um, you know, getting those smooth blends and also neutralizing. You have to be brave with the tones. And if you were given a white piece of paper, um, you know, don't be scared to leave some areas of white left on it. Um, I think the most important part, of course, when you're doing a portrait, um, you know, with a body included, obviously, is the face. Um, I personally, you know, I don't enjoy uh, the figure drawing aspect of it as much. Um, yeah, but, um, yeah, it, it's something that you, you kind of have to tie together, but uh, I spend most of my time on the face. Perhaps I should have done a little bit more on the body of this one. Regretting that a little bit, but... Um, let's see, we've got about 45 seconds left. Oh, no we don't. Uh, this is the um, links to other videos which are similar. Um, uh, if, if you like this one, uh, you might like my Kobe tutorial, my LeBron tutorial, um, you know, and so forth. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching the video, and um, yeah, I hope that you learned something. Post a video response. Um, you know, if, if you really like your drawing, I, I love seeing those. So, thank you for watching. I hope this helped.